after we hear the Word of God. What do you think? I think that might work pretty good. Amen. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to the book of Jude with me tonight? Brother Miller, will you lead us in prayer as we get into the Scripture? Yes. 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 Amen. All right. Verse 9, book of Jude. Verse 9. Yet Michael, the archangel, note that, archangel. He's called the chief prince in the book of Daniel. Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, disputed about the body of Moses. Now note carefully. Durst not bring against him, the devil, a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Now, the book of Jude uh, is, uh, is talking about an event that took place approximately 1,400 years before Christ. In other words, something that happened a long time ago when Jude was written. See, it was old when Jude was written. But Jude is referring to a, uh, the conflict that goes on in the spirit world Look at verse 8. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Now turn to 2 Peter chapter number 2 and verse 10. Second Peter 2 Peter 2.10. but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Look at verse 11. Whereas angels, that's what Michael is. Michael is an archangel. Michael is the only archangel mentioned in Scripture. Gabriel may be, but the Bible doesn't call him that. The apocryphal literature mentions uh, about five others as archangels, but we'll stick with the Bible. The only one we know of as an archangel is Michael. A lot of people try to say that Michael is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not. They are not the same. They are not the same. Verse 11, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, greater than a human being, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. Against who? The dignities, principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan, though a fallen cherubim, still has enormous power. He had the, 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 the authority and power to offer the kingdoms of this world to the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 12, but these as natural, notice the natural, as natural brute beast. The Bible says the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Neither can he know them, for they are spiritually discerned. He can't receive them. Why? Because everything, the world he lives in, is a natural world that can be explained naturally. Once it moves beyond the realm of the natural into the supernatural, he's lost. When it gets into the area of spiritual, he's lost. So the five senses is what he lives by. If he can't put it under a microscope or put it on the table of what do they call it, of elements, all of the, you know, gold and, and silver and iron and the rest of them, if it doesn't fit in the natural sphere, it doesn't exist as far as he's concerned. This holds true for these. Look carefully. 
but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Now that tells us that the attitude of a Christian should be one of reservation. You should be reserved. You should walk circumspectly. You should ask the Lord to give you wisdom. What's the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Godly wisdom, for example. You can fill your head full of facts. That's knowledge. You can memorize the Bible from cover to cover. That's knowledge. You can quote scripture verbatim, chapter and verse, and for our own end. That's knowledge. Wisdom is the ability to see it as God sees it, based on scripture. That's wisdom. That's what I want. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who upbraideth not and giveth to all men liberally. When I have to make a decision that affects my life, especially my spiritual walk, I want wisdom. Don't you? Amen. Don't you? Knowledge in no way uh, qualifies you to walk with the Lord. As a matter of fact, the Bible says knowledge does something. It does what? Puffeth up. It builds you up in pride. And when it does that, what does that happen? What happens when, you've, when you're built up in pride? The Bible said, God resisteth and giveth grace to the humble. So pride, however it manifests itself, becomes a wall of separation, even if you're saved, between you and the Lord. So when James says, if you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. This means humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. Humble yourself before the one who knows infinitely more than you do. Humble yourself for the one who knows the spirit world uh, far more than we do. And he understands the power of Satan and the principalities and the powers and the spiritual wickedness in high places. So how do we walk this Christian walk? How do we fight this? How do we war this warfare? How do we understand and, and discern the fiery darts of the devil? How do we know if it's a thought put into our mind or it's the Holy Spirit speaking to us? How do we know if it's just a natural mind? You have a natural mind. All of us do. This is why the Bible says that it must be renewed. It has to be renewed. You have to have the mind of Christ in order to discern spiritual things. So the Bible says as natural brute beasts, they speak evil of dignities. They mock and they make fun of a spirit world. Of, of, the, of the prince, of the power of the air, the God of this world, as if to think that he's some kind of a little doggy out here that you can dangle on the end of a chain and tell him to jump and he has to jump or flip and roll and, and do, and, 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 and do uh, you know, uh, little tricks for you. Like you can, I've, I've noticed the attitude of a lot of Christians is very cavalier when it comes to Satan. But the Lord Jesus wasn't that way. He said the prince of this world cometh and I have no part in him, and he departed. I have no part in him. When he confronted him, he confronted him. But if you remember, the Lord Jesus had spent 40 days in the wilderness, fasting, seeking the face of God, and Satan came to him. That's presumption, that's audacity, that's arrogance, and that's power. For Satan has power, and it's not our place tonight to be lifted up with pride by thinking that we could just bark an order to the devil and expect him to obey. Remember, these angels that are greater in power and might than we are durst not bring railing accusations against these dignities. And that when Michael confronted Satan over the body of Moses, Michael did not say, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. What did he say? The Lord rebuked thee. In the book of Zechariah, when the high priest was, uh, was uh, a representative of Israel, and God was showing in figurative, uh, a, figure, a figure there how he was going to cleanse Israel, one stood by his side to resist him. Who was that? It was Satan. And do you know what the wording there? The exact same wording as Michael when he rebuked, uh, when he rebuked Satan. The same wording. The Lord rebuked thee, Satan. 
You see, it's not, I have no power.